full of burning, bleeding, fat, naked cowboys. <laughs> Plus, Elvin Booty in Lineage 2 and important questions in La Pazelle Tactics. What's with the bear suit? Ask him. It's game time. Less enthusiasm. It's Adam Zessler and Morgan Webb. Hi. Welcome to Next Play. On today's show, the people behind Grand Theft Auto make a Western game because the American frontier had hoes too. It's true. Plus, a strategy RPG where you fight zombies and whales, so it's made expressly for people who hate alternative religious lifestyles and large marine mammals. Republicans. And let's not forget half-naked elf women, half-naked orc women, and me feeling very uncomfortable about Lineage 2. Plus, free downloadable content, bowling for your PS2, and a very special segment on the unique voices we found on Xbox Live. But we start the show with a look at the latest release from Rockstar Games. Yes, Rockstar is famous for releasing Grand Theft Auto, but they also put out subpar ultraviolet crapola like State of Emergency and Manhunt. So what's the new one like? Find out when we review Red Dead Revolver. Red Dead Revolver has the traditional story we all know from the Old West. Boy has dad. Life has hope. Dad dies at the hands of mean, dusty people. Son squawks like a bird. Son exacts revenge on hordes and nefarious clown people. Just like High Noon, but without the majesty. You gonna blow up Red Dead Revolver is the second attempt this year to revive the non-existent genre of the Western game, which means we've already exhausted all the Western cliches. Oh, wait, hold on. Here's the good. The game works. It's an action game that serves up ample action. Enemies are plentiful, and you have those fun old weapons that shoot slowly to take them down. And their heads squish like old-time melons. Since the Old West was overrun with craggy rocks and abandoned wheelbarrows, you can use these as cover, which helps keep the game from being just running and gunning. Keeping things even more authentic is the ability to slow down time and line up a series of shots on your enemies. For you kids who weren't around in these claim jumping opium and smoking days of yore, it's called Dead Eye. Plus, I bet 50% of you duelers out there love a good duel. Well, rejoice, because in this game, you can shoot people who are standing around waiting to be shot. I still don't really understand how it works, but I win a lot. The nicest aspect of Red Dead Revolver is that it throws a lot of different scenarios at you, like shooting in an old place, shooting on a moving train, shooting at nighttime, shooting homicidal clowns in arid setting. Now, the bad. Enemies aren't smart. They just kind of come at you and you shoot them. Apparently, mean people in the West could take a frightening amount of damage before acknowledging death. Maybe it is all the opium, but I know it's so the game offers a challenge, but it does look funny. Bad people run faster than you. And don't tell me that's gravity. The camera also plays an unfortunate role. The player has full control over it, which sounds nice, but it moves like a handicapped bear in a tub of molasses. The areas you play in are typically small, and the camera's in tight. Enemies come at you from all sides, making it very difficult to know where trouble's at until someone shoots you. Maybe if they said, howdy, varmint, or something, that would help. Also, despite the attempt at variety, the gameplay loses its spark pretty quickly. Most challenges just involve shooting dusty people. And now, the ugly. While the game isn't as ugly as a baboon's ass, it does lack the color and curiosity of that particular primate's butt. Apparently, all game designers think that old things looked old even when they were new. And this lady scares me. Good day to you, stranger. Are those jowls, or did she paint a mustache on herself using cigar ash? The biggest regret about Red Dead Revolver is that it could have been great. It needed a lot more work, but as it is, it's playable, not enjoyable. A two out of five. So, this game was originally developed by Capcom, who figured out it was probably going to suck. Then Rockstar picked it up, put some blood and naked clowns in it, and shipped the sucker out. You now, frankly, I'm surprised there isn't a chainsaw and a Dennis Hopper cameo in it. Now, the one bright point is the soundtrack, which could have been ripped from a Sergio Leone film. Moving on, we have a Japanese strategy RPG, so I'm going to leave the set now and read labels on cat food tins. It's just something to do. Come back. This was made by the makers of Disgaea. No, 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 it's no fancy feast. Mm. 
Just because Adam hates games with depth and substance doesn't mean you have to. Or do you? Anyway, this title has a cult following on the crescent-shaped island we call Nantucket. Sorry, I mean Japan. Anyway, here's our review of La Pucelle Tactics. Turn the fish. From the makers of Disgaea comes La Pucelle Tactics, a cute and cuddly strategy RPG about saving the world from evil spirits. Are you ready to exercise? Sorry. The game focuses on Prie, a teen demon hunter in training with a bit of an attitude. Why do I have to waste my time fighting zombies? They are such wimps! What if my clothes get dirty? They were just washed! Her sibling, Kulat, provides no, ranged attacks and helpful tidbits of wisdom. We're new with this, so we've got to start small and then move on to tougher enemies. Helpful for people who have never played a video game before. Combat takes place on gridded battlegrounds covered in colored energy streams. Prie and her exorcist friends can purify the sources of the energy, sending a shockwave of damage-dealing goodness along the stream that can eliminate enemies in its path. Alternately, you can just go beat the crap out of enemies until they die. In a cool twist, purifying an enemy before defeating it can cause it to switch sides and join you. It isn't long before your army consists not only of strikingly dressed demon hunters, but also the very bats and zombies they're mowing down. Once you complete a map, you can go back and play it again, which leads to an interesting exploit in the game. By returning to a map over and over and repeatedly KOing your own allies, you can level your characters up to ridiculous levels before you've even completed the first dungeon. Alright! Can you just stop complaining for a while? Shut up, you! This is a double-edged sword. If you use this trick, the game will be pathetically easy. If you don't, La Pucelle Tactics will chew you up and spit out the seeds. That's because this game is entirely based on numbers and stat levels, to the point that the tactics part can become irrelevant. The real strategy in La Pucelle is in finding the best ways to make your characters insanely powerful, and using the puzzle-like purification system to kill multiple enemies and fuse normal items into monster-terrorizing uber-weapons. The game doesn't require this approach, but it certainly favors it. If you're stifling maniacal laughter at this point, this is your kind of game. There's also a decent story mixed in here that ranges from the modeling. We lost our parents seven years ago. They died in a carriage accident coming back from work. To the ridiculous. What's with the bear suit? If you're a stat-maxing, power-leveling, anime-watching RPG fan, congratulations! A target audience is you! If your core isn't quite so hard, you may want to look elsewhere. Can you just stop complaining for a while? We give it a three out of five. You suck! With a name like La Pucelle, you'd think it was a French game. This is when Adam would usually say something kind of funny, probably about baguettes or a joke about Charles de Gaulle that only one person in the audience would get. I bet that one person really misses him right now. For everyone else, after the break, we have Naked Elves. I don't know why you people like that, but you do. Up next, setting the women's movement back 20 years, it's Lineage 2. Oh. Stealing your soul since 2003, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. We keep your souls in a box, along with a couple of preview copies of Halo 2. Yes, welcome back to X-Play. Yes, we have a massively multiplayer online game. Yes, it has dark elves. Yes, the elves are pretty much naked. Yes, they made me review it. Here's Lineage 2 for the PC. Ah. Welcome to the beautiful world of the MMORPG Lineage 2. Let's find out who we're gonna be today. I'm into the dark elves because they use black magic. So, those can't be real. They don't even jiggle. They sure are perky. Hmm, they do jiggle more when she runs, but I think it's safe to say they're totally fake. Uh. There's some elf surgeon out there doing a good business. Okay, I'm really sick of looking at her butt, so let's try it. Ooh, this burly orc woman. Urgh, I am so tough. Urgh, people will cower before me. Uh. My God, I'm looking at her butt too. I'm not gonna sit here all day and stare at her thong. I have a recommendation for the graphic artists. Stop watching so much porn! I'm gonna play as this dwarf girl. I'm sure she's just an addition for the pedophiles, but at least you can't see her butt. 
Now, don't get me wrong, the art is so beautiful, but the limited choices for character body type are as annoying as the running style of the elves. But now that I have my cute dwarf lady, I'm gonna set out on my adventure. Ah, I'm stuck in the floor. Get me out of here. Maybe I'll just run to a flat part. You start out with little tasks, like go get the groceries for the dwarf man. But mainly you'll be killing 27,000 of these poor little innocent raccoons for experience points. It's a little slower when, like my dwarf lady, you don't have magic. You kill one, then you sit down and recover health. Kill one, you sit, you kill one. Ooh, do you feel like a big man now? Killing cute little bunny corn as it flees in terror? The thing that sets lineage apart is that you can kill other players and take their stuff. Hey, quit it, I'm just a noob. Of course, if you do this enough, other people won't like you very much and come after you. Ha, that's what you get, punk ass. Hey, thanks for saving me, nice man. Hey, hey, don't run away. What are you doing later? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a guy. If you don't have a psychopathic antisocial bent, Lineage 2 offers the standard MMORPG buffet of activities. But the game is so stingy in handing out cash and experience points that playing feels a little like running up the down escalator. You're going to invest a lot of time before you get to kill anything bigger than you. But I wouldn't know, because I still have about 180 more raccoons to kill. Why don't you guys take off? I'm gonna be here a while. A two out of five. Now, for some reason, MMORPG players really like scantily clad women, mm -hmm. especially if they have horns or pointy ears. I don't know what that says about your relationships with your mothers, but you know, hey, that's between you and your mom. And what's between you and your computer, aside from a sneeze guard, are a lot of free downloads, like this one, from Neighbors from Hell 2. So while it might be nice to take a vacation, this one's going to be a nightmare. It seems that Mr. Cranky here has a problem. It's his neighbor, Woody. Woody has a reality TV show that revolves around, well, ruining his neighbor's good times. It's a journey of bear traps, soggy hats, electrocutions, and hopefully, high ratings. And who wouldn't want that? Interested parties should point their browsers over to the official Neighbors from Hell website. Here you can meet the assorted characters, peruse illustrations, and along the bottom panel, find a link to download a two-level playable demo. It's the Neighbors from Hell 2 Vacation Downloadable, and it's free to take a peek at. Just be sure Big Olga doesn't catch you looking. <laughs> yes, believe it or not, there are tons of free downloads on the internet. And only 90% are porn. I checked. Coming up, because even game designers run out of ideas, it's Strike Force Bowling. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. It's Adam Setzler and Morgan Webb. We're not that bad. Have you seen Nash Bridges? <laughs> Welcome back to X-Play, the show that has the audacity to review a bowling game. Yes, and a continued effort to prove that we're totally open to new experiences that don't involve physical activity. We have a review of a dynamic new bowling game for the PS2. Dynamic. Sounds better than unnecessary. Here's a review of Strike Force Bowling. You know your gaming system has earned its stripes when bowling titles start appearing on shelves. Now it's not necessarily a precursor to the apocalypse, but rather a positive sign that mainstream sports are being adequately covered to the point where publishers are looking for something new to fill the void. That's a good thing, of course, especially to those patiently holding out for versions of horseshoes, croquet, and badminton. Strike Force Bowling is a budget release hoping to bowl over PS2 owners while trying to spare gamers from complicated controls and any hint of depth. The interface here, which involves timing button presses at specific intervals along the horizontal meters, couldn't be simpler. If it were any more basic, it would be hooked on phonics. Players can move their bowler left or right to set the ball's path indicated by a red line, like so. Spin is adjusted by moving a percentage marker up and down, which curiously has no effect on the line showing the ball's direction. After these two adjustments, it's time to bowl, which involves pressing a button twice. The first to set power, and the second to set accuracy. 
And that's that. So while the pin action seems realistic enough, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable effect of oil on the ball, and the lanes all appear to have the same amount of carry. Sadly, Strike Force Bowling looks like an early 3D computer title, something you might have played back in the days of the old wood burning computers. There are only eight characters available, two males, a few females, an alien, a robot, and one skeleton. The skeleton, ironically, shows up when you play skins rounds. The bowler moves stiffly and has the same awkward looking animations for reaction shots like cheers, jumps, tantrums, and so forth. Which are fun to watch like, but twice maybe? Yeah, note I said maybe. Unfortunately, there's little difference between the lanes other than appearance. They did toss in a golf variation, but I don't know, I suppose it was meant to be cool. Anyway, well gosh, that's about it. What you see is what you get. So since Strike Force Bowling doesn't have the depth or realism to satisfy bowling fans, nor does it have the visual flair or offbeat gameplay to lure arcade sports junkies from their usual titles, you might end up with buyer's remorse. The game looks and feels every bit like its budget status, which might be okay if you adjust your expectations accordingly. For most players, however, Strike Force Bowling is the game equivalent of bowling shoes. Cheap, tacky, a little stinky, and something best left behind the rental counter. We can only afford it in underwhelming two out of five. Ah, yes, the ancient Egyptian art of bowling. Yes. And for the pins, they use the sacred jars that contain the organs of their mummified friends. Mm, historical accuracy in games, we have to applaud it when we see it. Just like the scary clowns in Red Dead Revolver. I mean, those guys are how the West was really one. One terrified child at a time. Up next, yes, this me. Xbox Live user raises the level of discourse. Do you mind trying to make a love to your car? Wit and wisdom of the fine art of online conversation. It came from Xbox Live. <laughs> Go, yeah. I have carpal syndrome. I can't feel my fingers. They're turning blue. My eyes are bleeding. I'm hot. Yes, you are, baby. Oh, it's all. Have you might try to make love to your car? I did it once. I, I just made out with it, man. That's all that was. There was nothing gay or anything. Hey, the, X the, the Xbox box is big enough to live in. You should hear the stuff we couldn't air. No, no, you shouldn't. The fact that there, out there somewhere is a man who gives new meaning to the phrase auto erotica is terrifying enough. Yes, please, Xbox Live users, refrain from making love to your Honda Civic. That totally violates the warranty. Mm -hmm. Now, we end tonight with an answer to one of your burning questions. What happened to Corey Hayden? That guy was great in the 80s. Actually, this is a technical question about video game design that many of you have asked. And since we aren't exactly programmers, we called in an expert to answer your question about MIP maps. MIP maps are scaled versions of a unique texture used in a rendered frame. As the distance between the viewpoint and a textured polygon increases, scaled down MIP maps are used to achieve a more realistic effect. Likewise, as the textured polygon's distance decreases with respect to the viewpoint, high resolution MIP maps are used to increase the detail of a rendered object. MIP is short for the Latin phrase multum in parvo, which means many things in a small place. Oh God! It's all very clear to me now. Yes. Now, hey, if you're unclear on anything game-related, catch The Road to Geforia, premiering this Friday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on G4 Tech TV. Geforia, the award show for gamers, is presented by EB Games and G, and you can watch it later this week. And now, if you want some instant gratification now, you can always go to our website. Yes, go to our website. That's G4TechTV.com slash... 
X Play. That's the name of our show. Yes, that's very good. That's why it's there. And there you're gonna find some reviews of the games we talk about this week. And video and stuff. Yeah, and there's some pictures and stuff. And pictures, too. pictures. I love pictures. You can learn a lot about yeah, that. So visuals. go there now and go go say stupid stuff on Xbox Live so we can tape it and yes. it's more great to you. Love it. Alright, you guys are great out there. <laughs> Wait, blew something out. <laughs>